In this episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about giant purple moth monsters, ducks on a rapier, and barbecue in our discussion of The Dire Days of Willow Weep Manor by Shannon K. Garrity and Christopher Baldwin. (laughs) (laughs) Those things don't have anything to do with this book. Excuse me, they do. There are giant purple moth monsters. There are dogs on a rapier. And barbecue is mentioned at one point. (laughs) Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult. Books, series, authors, and voice actors that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today we're going to discuss The Dire Days of Willow Weep Manor by Shannon K. Garrity and Christopher Baldwin. Standard disclaimer, if you haven't read this book, please remember that Fictional Hangover is all about spoilers. If you haven't read it and don't want to be spoiled, stop listening to us and go read it and then come back. If you haven't done this but want to pretend that you have, or if you don't care about spoilers, or if you just like the show so much that you don't care about any of that, then listen up. Woo! Woo! It was so hard for me to say, if you haven't read or listened, go read or listen. Like, (laughs) graphic novel, don't say listen! Yes, there's no audio book for this one. We have, we're having to actually read, you know, actual books. I know. What is this? I can't audio read. Audio books are actual books. What am I saying? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> terrible, terrible. Do you know what, though? I think with the standard disclaimer, it's somewhat um, partially redundant with this one, just because it is, like, taking a satirical look at gothic horrors. And if you have any, any kind of like familiarity with them you know the story and how it's gonna go in the majority like 80 percent of the story you know how it's gonna go yeah there's a couple of things that don't quite go how you would expect them to go i I do not really i didn't know they were in the italian but you know fine (laughs) it's fine it's fine speaking of the italian do you have any background information (laughs) I do. I do. Uh, So this is from smashpages.net. And uh, when Shannon was asked about working with Chris Baldwin, she talked about how she's known him for a long time and that they've always wanted to do something together. But my favorite part and why I chose this is because she says, I mostly know him online. We did not meet in person at any point while this book was being made. And I just wanted to just squee like, oh, hey. she has met him in person before. So it doesn't really count. It's not no. really the same. But still, everything that they did for this book was all online. And that just makes me happy. Wait, well, it's me and Claire. Oh. oh. Squee. Squee. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I like it when you tell people, "Oh, so what are you doing? Oh, I'm recording the podcast tonight. Oh, who'd you do it with? Blah blah blah. blah. Well, I've never met, really. Yeah, I know. It's my favorite part of telling people about the podcast. Like, yeah, we we only know each other on the internet. How, how long have you been there doing this for? Oh, uh, well, me two and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> You've never met in person. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. But that's okay. It is. For now. For now, yes. <laughs> Ominous when... for now. <laughs> you know, we're going to meet one day, Claire. It will happen. It will happen. Especially will. if people keep subscribing to our Patreon. Yes, I would really <laughs> like it if more people would subscribe to our Patreon so we can have more money to meet each other in real life. I mean, that's that's our main goal mm-hmm. with the Patreon. Exactly. Um, and now, I mean, after book club on Tuesday, for people who don't know, we have Vampire Book Club on the last Tuesday of every month. It was decided there's going to be a world tour of, um, what what, what was it, Yorkley type? Uh, like Greasy Hole in the Wall Diners? Hole, yeah, in America, and then mm-hmm. a dinosaur theme park in Norfolk in the UK. Yep. <laughs> We're going adventuring. <laughs> yes, we are. We decided, forget Fictional Hangover in Vegas. Go to Fictional Hangover at the Dinosaur Park. (laughs) And we're all going to wear Vampire Book Club baseball shirts and start a a little league. 
Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. And we're going to play that song from Twilight constantly. I had a really weird dream the other night. You can edit this bit out or keep it in, but it's appropriate. Um, you did a fashion shoot. We're like Both of us did a fashion shoot for our vampire book club t-shirts. But yours was cosplaying Jasper. <laughs> From the Twilight movies, you know where he's got the baseball cap and he like yes. he has the bat and he just bats it again, takes yes. his hand, and I was like, I woke up thinking, did this actually happen? This must have happened. <laughs> and you did the sparkly glow as well on the edit oh. on the post production. I was like, God, yes. please let this be real. I was so disappointed when I woke up and realised it was a dream. Look, it's not real yet. It's not I'm, real yet. I'm going to make I your could... dreams come true. Oh my god, thank you. I can't remember what mine was, by the way. I, it was vampire related, but I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. But it, it can't beat Jasper cosplay with the Vampire Book Club baseball No, nope, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't know when, but it's going to happen. <laughs> so there you go. That was my dream the other night. Probably Tuesday night after book club. <laughs> That's terrible. But I'm doing it. I really am. I'm going to do it. I need to find a baseball bat. There we go. Okay. You have to get yourself to a thrift shop. I know. I'm, I need one. <laughs> we'll go to an estate sale and get a really, really classic old one. Ooh, Ooh. I do love an estate sale. Exactly. Maybe I will. <laughs> Anywho, back to gothic horrors. <laughs> yes. Is it even a horror? I don't no. think so. It's it's a gothic inspired novel, graphic novel. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I need to, I need to say this. I'm sorry, Joe. To my friend Joanne Park, and I'm very sorry. I made you do the gothic novel back at university that module. I'm really really sorry, because you ended up reading every single one of the books, and I read precisely none. <laughs> and I'm the one who made you do it, and. 20 <coughs> cough cough years later you still cannot hear the words gothic novel without shooting daggers at me and i'm so sorry i really am and i have apologized repeatedly and i'm doing it again on the internet i'm sure i've already done it before you have you have done it before exactly but this time it it makes even more sense because we it, are discussing a gothic novel it does but in my, I say in my defense, it's, there's no defense. I really, really should have read the books. I tried to read the Italian, but it was honestly shit. So I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But if the Gothic novels had been like Willow Weep, I would have been there every week with bells on and an umbrella in my hand, reading each one. They were yeah, not. <laughs> yeah. Look, I will never. I. It's not. It's not my cup of tea. But no. but I'll read this one. It helps this out with pictures. It does help <laughs> that there's pictures. It does. It's all pictures. <laughs> so, yeah. Not a fan. But this was fun. Mm, that's the main thing. That is the yes. main thing. Yes. Yes. Should we dive into the summary? We should. On a dark and stormy night, through windswept torrents, Haley is going after her heart's desire. A better grade on her book report. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately for Haley, the fourth essay on Wuthering Heights isn't passing muster, and her teacher begs her to do one on a different book. And no, not Jane Eyre. No more castles, no more gothic romances. Why can't she just be into sexy vampires like the other girls? And us. us. While stopping on a bridge to spout poetry in the rain like a proper gothic heroine, Haley sees someone in the river below, drowning. Abandoning her pile of books, Haley races down and helps the man to safety towards some unfamiliar lights. As Haley loses consciousness... Lightning flashes, revealing a gothic castle. Ooh. Ooh. Two finely dressed men on horseback galloping by spy a maiden unconscious on a rock. The more jovial of the pair is enthusiastic in his attempt to save the maiden, but alas, the cold river water prevents him from wading past his ankles. <laughs> Thankfully, his sullen companion 
doesn't demonstrate the same delicate disposition and is able to fetch the maiden. Haley wakes in a large four-poster bed to a looming silhouette. It's not a monster. It's something far worse. The housekeeper! <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> the stoic housekeeper, Wilhelmina, has come to inform her that Master Lawrence is owed thanks for saving her, though the loudly enthusiastic Master Cuthbert wants Haley to say it was him. But Haley remembers being the one doing the saving? As she ponders this, Haley wanders out to the balcony and meets a ghost. But after a short introduction, Wilhelmina drags her back inside to get dressed. Meanwhile, the dark and brooding Master Lawrence is trying to tell Cuthbert to get rid of the girl. Their priority is finding their brother. Haley comes down the grand staircase then, and while Lawrence is kicking her out, she makes a remark about the cute, crabby guy who looks like them. As she might prove useful in finding his way with younger brother, Lawrence asks her to help find Montague. Under the manor, Cuthbert is writing of his heroism as he walks into a room where a strange, green, glowing device is located. <laughs> I just love everything about Cuthbert. <laughs> Haley and Lawrence leave the manor, and as they walk, Haley asks a ton of questions. Where are they? When are they? What year is it? Is this place real? Lawrence avoids each one. Ah, oh, it's so frustrating. They are heading into Blood Wolf Forest and aren't far into this dark and foreboding place when the earth shakes. Telling her to stay, Lawrence runs off. Back in the manor, Cuthbert tells Lawrence he has fixed the strange machine after a crack opened. Ooh. Ooh. Another boom shakes Bloodwolf Forest and rocks Haley. When the world stops shaking, Haley notices she's in a different place and the castle ghost is there. The ghost is Cecily, and Haley is the first person who's been able to see her, so she's very excited. A bit too excited. It's like, calm down, love. <laughs> Usually Cecily can't leave the manor, but every now and again she can get out to the countryside. To help Haley get back, Cecily makes Will of the Wisps to guide them before being yanked back. Following the Wisps, Haley is taken to a brooding man on a stark and lonely strand. It's Montague. Ooh. Montague explains that he has been trying, through a series of <laughs> ingenious schemes, such as a tunnel, a catapult, a large kite, another catapult, and an inflatable pony, to escape whatever this place is for years in order to find help from the outside. <laughs> Being from the outside, volunteers to lend a hand. Passing an awfully nice cliffside hermitage and through baleful catacombs, Montague takes Haley via a back entrance to the underground room to the infernal device. Uh. Oh, yeah. Haley isn't equipped for this. As Montague hands Haley a pamphlet titled Getting to Know Your Gasket Universe, droplets of green ooze seep from the walls. And as Haley is looking at the pamphlet, the ooze is looking at her. Ooh. I love that pamphlet so much. <laughs> The pamphlet gives strictly forbidden information not to be shared unless you're about to politely die. <laughs> it tells how there are countless universes and sometimes things crack and cause unsightly reality leaks. Oops. Mm. A gasket universe is installed, which is what will weep is, and contains the leakage between the two universes. In this case, the two universes are a quaint little one filled with pandas and Carolina-style barbecue, and the other infected with a force of penultimate evil. <laughs> 
if the gasket universe of Will Weep should fail, apocalypse! Ah! (laughs) Too bad, so sad. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so that pamphlet wasn't very helpful, even though it was fantastic. (laughs) Politely die. Montague explains that he and his brothers are foundlings and have been charged with looking after the Gasket universe all their lives. Willow Weep, as it looks now, has taken on the form of a gothic novel, as it had an unusually powerful radiation. Haley feels vindicated by this. I mean, gothic novels are her life. <laughs> While Montague deals with another crack... Haley slips out to get some air. In Blood Wolf Forest, Lawrence and Cuthbert are out searching for Haley, who is not where Lawrence left her. He literally left her lying flat on her back in the ground, and she's like, <laughs> I'll just wait here now. <laughs> While Lawrence will continue to look in the forest, Cuthbert goes to the blasted heath, where he meets a sinister monk <laughs> with glowing green eyes who brings Cuthbert under his thrall with the promise of... Candy. (laughs) (laughs) The brothers coincidentally meet up in a hermitage as the rain starts again, neither Lawrence or Montague noticing anything off about Cuthbert. (laughs) Back in Willow Weep Manor, the housekeeper performs her duty of tromping over the hills, crying, Oh, Whaley, Whaley, (laughs) Whaley, and finds Haley after slipping in the mud. Taking her back to the manor, Haley is comforted with snacks and a roaring fire. When the brothers return, they are intent on using romance and poetry to persuade Haley to help them. Lawrence's endeavors are thunderous, Cuthbert's flowery, and Montague needn't bother at all as Haley is going to help them. But he still takes the opportunity to have a dramatic moment. No. <laughs> The infernal device is ridiculously complicated, (laughs) and Haley can't make head nor tails of it, so they all decide to turn in for the night. A little later, Haley, on her way to say goodnight to Montague, spots a cool library, and the sinister monk who is covering the statues of horses on the fountain in glowing green bile. Oh no. Oh no. By the time she gets to the courtyard, Cecily and Tor, the monk is gone. But Cuthbert is there, acting even stranger. The next day, the group are examining the green bile-covered fountain when Haley tells them her invisible friend has something to say. (laughs) Cecily, the ghost of Willow Whip Manor, came from a universe infected with the bile. She tested an experimental teleportation device, but obviously there were some kinks, and she ended up here. She tells them, through Haley, that the bile changes everything into a part of itself until nothing is left. Dun, dun, dun. So dramatic. It is, it really is. As the sound of crashing and the yips of infected wolves can be heard, our intrepid groups make ready to fight back. The housekeeper, Wilhelmina, Haley, and Cecily will stay in the manor and protect the central infernal device. Lawrence with his sword, Cuthbert with his rapier, and Montague with his butter knife (laughs) will take their horses and see that all device stations are in working order. (laughs) This <laughs> butter knife. They ran out of swords. I've got this. I'll better you up. As he is journeying through Blood Wolf Forest, Lawrence happens upon the monk who confronts him. Back at the manor, the grounds are infested with bile infected bunnies. <laughs> they are not cute. Suddenly, the earth shakes, and here he sees the landscape has shifted again. Lawrence and the monk are on the blasted heath, and the monk runs Lawrence through with his own sword. Oh, no. Running to help him, the earth shakes again, and Haley is taken into the forest, surrounded by bile infected animals. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Cuthbert and Montague are on the beach, but are separated by one of the shakes. Luckily, this also puts Haley in Montague's path, 
and she quickly explains what has happened to Lawrence. And it starts raining. <laughs> this is a gothic novel after all. So it has to constantly to rain. rain. Cuthbert was transported back to the manor where the monk is trying to get inside. As Cuthbert is weak-willed and has a malleable mind, the monk easily makes Cuthbert tell him the best way to invade the house as we see his horde of bile-infected animals growing behind him. Oh no. Is this Cuthbert. the scene? Is this the scene where Cuthbert like starts out saying that he's not going to help the monk and he's not going to be like thralled by him anymore and he reaches down his throat to try to pull the candy back out? Is that yes. this scene? <laughs> yes. You take your candy back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Haley and Montague are racing to help the felled Lawrence when the earth shakes and they see Willow Wheat Manor infected with the bile. Then the earth shakes again, separating them. Oh, crud. <laughs> Haley trudges through the mud and reaches the hermitage, finding inside the resident hermitess, who was once the previous caretaker of Willow Weep, but is now retired. She gives Haley some much-needed motivation soup, and delightful lemon meringues. The Gasket universe may run on rules, but Haley will defy them. Giving Haley one final gift, an umbrella, because it's really boring out there, the Hermitess sends Haley on her way. When Haley reaches Willow Wheat Manor, she finds Cuthbert trying to drown himself with rain for his <laughs> betrayal. He's literally just standing there with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> He really isn't a complicated person. (laughs) No. En route, they meet Montague, who has found the injured Lawrence. Together they head to the gatehouse, where Haley gives an impassioned speech about breaking out of the confines of their assigned roles. Haley declares that she is no maiden. Oh no, she is a gothic heroine. The mad monk is loudly exclaiming bad poetry, much to his own disgust, when (laughs) Cuthbert, covered in a bedsheet, pretends to be the ghost of Willow Weep. He is annoyingly distracting, gaining the monk's ire and attention. Then Montague steps forth with witty quips and a buttered tea cake. (laughs) Cuthbert returns in full plate armor, and all the while, the injured Lawrence is watching from secret passageways through the eye holes cut out of paintings. I love this scene. <laughs> the monk is properly mad now and calls forth his legions of gothic villains to attack. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I love all the villains. I have the list if you want them. <laughs> I've got them down below as well. <laughs> Haley was making her way to the infernal device, but at this onslaught, she goes to aid Montague and Cuthbert. However, the onslaught was merely an illusion to give the monk time to flee. Before they can take a breath, the real legion hits. This time, it's the bile infected animals, and they trample Cuthbert. Wilhelmina, in full Valkyrie garb, Jumps down from the mezzanine, tackles a bear, and punches a deer in the (laughs) face. (laughs) Giving Haley, Montague, and Cuthbert enough time to escape. Dump Cuthbert with Lawrence and get Cecily to lead them to the infernal device. (laughs) So it's just just, like jumps down, like, ah! She's just flying down in her little helmet. So fantastic. <laughs> did she just punch a deer? <laughs> yes, she <did>. yes, she <laughs> did just punch a deer in the face. <sighs> the infernal device has been sabotaged and is coming apart. Montague offers to hold it together while Haley tracks down the monk who has, in true villainous gothic style, gone to the nearest perilous height for a climactic battle. There are a lot of stairs. Wielding her umbrella, Haley is able to knock the monk upside his head, nearly toppling him from the tower. But she can't let him fall. (gasps) Yes, she can. Yeah, Yeah, you should let him fall. Yeah. As she helps him up, 
a large portal rents the air, causing them both to fall over the edge and down into the main mechanism of the device. The battle continues, but the rules have slightly changed. Reality is malleable, and Haley can bend it to her will. The monk transforms into his true self. A very unattractive mass of green sludge. (laughs) (laughs) Haley is able to trap the sludge in her umbrella and bends reality to make it into a sealed bottle. With the help of Cecily, who is corporeal here and able to transform into her true purple moth-like alien self, they return to Willowweed. That's not gothic. <laughs> I know nope. it. Nope, she's a giant purple monster. <laughs> the bile has receded, but there is much work to be done. Foremost is fixing the infernal device. The Hermitess has come to help, which is great for Wilhelmina as the Hermitess, who is called Sybil, is her tragic tale of lost love. Oh, the reuniting them and kissing it's so cute. So cute. <laughs> After a montage of panels where the group fix the device, restore Willow Wheat Manor, have lunch and cavort with birds, only one crack <laughs> remains, and it's the one to Haley's home. After some emotional goodbyes, Haley steps through, but Sybil doesn't close this crack back up. Ooh. Ooh. Back at school, Haley hands in her assignment. It's not the requested book report. It's an actual book of her adventure in Willow Wheat Manor. So the teacher calls it extra credit. I love this teacher. She's just so dejected. Like She oh. she gives zero Fs. <laughs> her field of Fs is empty and bre- uh, it, it is being salted. The ground has been salted. <laughs> Haley is different now. Sporting adventurer meets mechanic garb and a pile of books which center more on celestial mechanics and horror novels than gothic romances. Montague pedals toward her on a contraption that can only loosely be labeled as a bicycle. Thanks, Wilhelmina. And they ride off together for coffee. Oh. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Take a take a little break here. Yeah. Everyone yeah. go and listen to this promo for another podcast. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Barbara. And I'm Lauren. We are the hosts of Badass Literature Society, a book review podcast where we take book recommendations from listeners like you, read them, and then discuss them on our show. Join us once a month as we dive into the books you picked and talk about them. And don't miss our bonus episodes covering all sorts of random bookish topics that come out in between reviews. Don't worry, if you want to read one of the books, the first part of each episode is designated spoiler-free, so you can listen and see if you'd like to read it, and then come back and listen to the rest later. You can find Badass Literature Society on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Amazon Podcasts, and anywhere else you like to listen. Now, back to the show. Okay, are we back? We're back. (laughs) Candy. (laughs) Yes, wait here, let me... (laughs) Is your mind malleable enough for me to offer you candy? (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. So you read this one before I did. Yes. Which I really enjoyed because then I could send you screenshots of all of my favorite panels. (laughs) (laughs) Made me really, really happy. I think I sent you the one of the um, Why Can't You Just Be Into Vampire you did. As like, you this, did. If there's one reason for us to read this book, it's this single panel alone. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Why can't you like sexy vampires? <laughs> oh. So, mm. my standout moments include mm. all of the panels that I sent you. <laughs> there's a couple there, yes. Yes. <laughs> Most um, involving Cuthbert. <laughs> Almost all of them involve Cuthbert, especially the one where he's got his rapier out. And this is before we find out that there's a butter knife also, which is hilarious. But he has his rapier out and he's like somehow speared through a duck. And the duck is like, 
and he's just standing there with his like his little mouth and his little mustache and he's just got a duck on his sword <laughs> duck on his stick <laughs> I loved him so much. My favorite Cuthbert panel is when he's trying to drown himself in the rain. <laughs> it's, it, just... it, 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 it's kind of like, it reminded me a little bit of like um, a Simpsons kind of animation where the, mm-hmm. the head nearly falls all the way yes. back. Yeah. And it's not anatomically correct at all. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm trying to drown myself. <laughs> At this point, it's like a drizzle as well. <laughs> Bless him, he's not very smart. No, no. I also but... really like the list of gothic villains. <laughs> Vampiric seductresses, cruel governesses, scheming dukes, scheming counts, scheming widows, Italians! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? Out of all of that list, the one that makes me bleh, the most is the freaking Italians. Not because of Italians, but because of the book, The Italian. Yeah. Oh, that's the one yeah. gothic novel I did track. Well, Dracula counts as a gothic novel, but from that module referred to earlier, the gothic yeah. novel module, um, that's the only one I, I, I tried. And oh my god, it was rubbish. <laughs> oh. Do you know if you don't like. If you can't get through things like Jane Eyre, Wuthering Heights, or any of Austen's books, you are not going to stand a single chance with gothic novels. No. No. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, in the Julia Quinn books, um, the later ones, there's this ongoing Mad Baron series, and she is was going to produce a, a comic for it, but um, was with her sister before her sister was uh, sadly killed in a, a car accident. Um, and it was based on the, the Mad Baron books, and it just takes the make out of gothic novels because the heroine, one, within it, one chapter, her mother's pecked to death by pigeons. There's a plague that takes out everybody but her. Um, and it's just it's, but it's not like a, it's not like a, ha- a a horrible plague. It's a funny plague, and then there's all of this spouting of, you know, do I do this? Do I do that? What is in my purview? And it's just it's it really just takes the mick out of gothic novels. Quite similarly to the way Willow Weep has, where it just ratchets everything up to the nth degree, and then it, it gets to the point where it has to break that stereotype. Crazy. Mm. Crazy. <laughs> I'm I'm not the biggest uh, we were, neither of us are the biggest fan of gothic novels, but if honestly, I think if me, like, this, like even less than you. Oh definitely, definitely. Um I can I can at least get myself through Regency books and No. No. Yeah. I, no. I, need, I need comedy to it though. They're just so just so dour. We talked about this when we um, read uh, My Play and Jane, though, didn't we? How how difficult we find that kind of literature. And it's not an accessible read. No. I really enjoyed this one. I was a little worried at first, because I have had this on my bookshelf for quite some time. And I was a little worried. I thought I flicked through it, and I thought, this gives me um, Bloodlust and Bonnet vibes. Is it, am I going to get that sense of comedy? Because that is perfection. It really is. It really is, and honestly, it was like the like you say, like Cuthbert scenes was like it was just perfect. I'm here. I'm here for Cuthbert. The poetry bit was <laughs> the 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 determined to get Haley on the side. So Lawrence being the dour, staid, you know, boring, older gentleman, and he his spouting this really horrific poetry to her and it's like oh my god oh my shut up that's awful and then Cuthbert <laughs> comes along with his floweriness it's, it was Montague's which was actually my favourite where he's like starting she's like it's fine you don't need to do anything but then he suddenly breaks into this massive monologue and then goes and dies and just collapses over the arm of the chair but yeah yeah that'll do that'll that do that was very good <laughs> mm, do you know what else I loved about Montague mm. <laughs> his escape attempts <laughs> 
<laughs> Especially the large kite. <laughs> It was the um, the blow the inflatable pony that I liked. It was like, damn you rock. I would have made it too if it wasn't for that rock. <laughs> and both of the catapults, <laughs> he just like smashes into a tree. And it's just a little illustration of him like with his arms and legs straight out <laughs> into a tree. <laughs> I want to know what all of his skip temps are because they, these are like various ones throughout the entire list and there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked the large kite too. Like, why? To why are you trying the large kite? Why? Why are you trying an inflatable pony for goodness' sake? That's not going to get you very far, is it? No, not at all. Oh, look! Here's another catapult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find the poetry because I thought the poetry scene was hilarious. And the large kite. Look at him. He's just upside down in a bush with his <laughs> arms and legs straight out. Oh, here it is. But yeah, look, the inflatable pony is number 105. Like, what else happened? What else happened? How did we get to 105? Exactly. So great. I've got the poetry. Would you like me to recite you some terrible poetry? Uh, yes, yes, I think you should. Okay, so Lawrence is. So Lawrence is the older brother who's very dour. O oh, muse, wiring the clouds of thunderous tears. Alight the lightning, shake the seas with rain. Hark all, cry out that verse. Late in her ears, come galloping forth upon the throbbing brain. And high time, I say. And then he rips his hair out. <laughs> And then Cuthbert comes along, shoves symbolically significant flowers and perfumed note, an engraved penny and some ribbons and cheese. The cheese, cheese would have me. Yes. And then his is, "'Twas the dusky shaded eventide. Methought romance should be a thing I tried. Oh, ah, uh, the flowered glen with myrtle wreathed. I skipped and danced and stepped and sometimes breathed. I plucked a blossom and with deep sigh pressed Against my rapturous, amorous, conquered breast. <laughs> Gosh, I'm good. And then Montague's is, Alas, alas, alas and alas, and also, alack, woe, farewell, I die. <laughs> I also have to show this one off. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Honestly. <laughs> we're falling into that trap with graphic novels again where there's just so many panels that we want to be able to say that the easiest know, thing is if people just rent it out yes and yes just take a look because it, the 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 art is so clean as well um, it is i love the artwork i love it yeah it's very different from um uh, the last one we looked at which was laura olympus which relies so heavily I mean, this relies heavily on colour, but the colour in Laura Olympus tells part of the story. Right, yes, the colour has meaning. Yeah, this just gives it vibrancy. I mean, it gets dark when the rain, and you know, yes. it, 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 it's, it tells a lot of the moods. Um, but it's just such a crisp, um, crisp artwork. And every now and again, they do some like flowery, romancy kind of um, things with the, 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 the font. Yes. Just make it that little oh, bit when, more... I love, speaking of, like, the lettering, when she declares herself a gothic heroine, <laughs> it's in, a, like, an extreme gothic font, and it's it's lovely. <laughs> Do you know what I really appreciated about Haley's character? The umbrella what? carrying, it's very British. <laughs> um, it's one of these where it's like, oh, you don't know what the weather's going to be like, so take an umbrella... And I remember, I feel like this is something from my childhood where it was like, well, you don't know what the weather's going to be like, take an umbrella. Just take, just take, just in case, take an umbrella. I freaking hate umbrellas. They're so annoying. They get in the way. If it's not raining, you're just carrying this umbrella. And if it does rain and you close it up, it turns into this like foisty, stinky, soggy mess. It's awful. And they just, and if it's too windy, you can't use them. You can't see through them unless you've got a see through one. If, it, if you need to keep it lower. And you take people's eyes out. I take my own eyes out. I hate umbrellas. I hate them. 
I had a really, really nice, like, big, deep bell-shaped one that was clear. And it was lovely because I could just pull it straight down. And I didn't get wet at all because I was completely inside it. My mum has one of those. Yeah. And it's very good. It is very good. But I'd rather just have a hood. Yeah, me too. Especially after having lived in Seattle where if you had an umbrella, people called you a tourist because you should just be used to it by now. So we didn't we didn't use umbrellas in Seattle. We I mean we had rain jackets and they were very nice. You know, they worked very well. And so now I don't carry an umbrella anymore. I just use my rain jacket. Even though the rains in Arkansas are very 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 different from the mm. rains in Seattle. They're like hard and terrifying rains. <laughs> with, you know, tornadoes. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> my my problem with hoods at the moment, this is why we're talking fashion. Um a lot of the hoods on the coats that I get, and I think it's a woman's coat problem, they fall off. That's like they have a certain element of impracticality mm-hmm. where as long as it doesn't rain, you don't move, you don't walk, you don't turn your head in any way, the hood will stay. But as soon as you in any way, shape or turn, try to use it in a practical sense, it falls down and you're just like, yeah. God damn. what's the so point? I end up like tucking the ends into my coat and wedging it in place and then yeah. looking like Kenny from south park so it works effectively i just i have to pull my strings my my jacket has has strings and so it's just cinched up on my face i i wish mine had had strings i really wish mine had strings and then sometimes i have like a baseball cap on to try and keep some of the water out Mm -hmm. of my glasses otherwise i just stick the glasses at the end of the nose and just trudge Anywho, a book. Anyway, and not not surviving rain. Yes, <laughs> I adored the scenes with the with the housekeeper with Wilhelmina. She's just she, the art the the character of her, the caricature of her. She reminded me of somebody, a cartoon of somebody. And the closest I could think is if it was a a grizzled Hey Arnold. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She has that kind of like football rugby shaped head yeah she, but she's also very stout yes like she's she's thick she's sturdy and powerful yes she, she's gonna wrestle a bear and punch a deer yes with no struggle at all yeah it's just and like, i love i love her little helmet that she wears <laughs> with the wings on it. yes with the wings the valkyrie wings <laughs> i like the panel where she just looks outside and sees the range she's like oh fine and then shoves a cloak on and then goes onto the heath and it's like whaley whaley <laughs> like well shrug this is what i have to do this is what it's time for in willow weep i have to go out and wail <laughs> she has the same sense of humor as the master of the house as well it's like yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. terrifying terrifying <laughs> I love a hermitage as well. There's not enough places with a hermitage. Right, yeah. I, it blew my mind when I found out that, like, people were employed to be hermits. <laughs> like, years ago when I found this out, I was like, what? I only see, you know, you think of hermits, the type of person who literally takes themselves out of society and goes and sits and lives in caves. Mm-hmm. No, these people are paid good money by the masters of the house to live in the hermit. And live in the hermitage and be a hermit. So I'm like, hang on, hermit is a profession. I can be paid to be antisocial. Sign me that. up. I would love that. Yeah. So good. Bring it back. Let's bring it yeah, back. Yeah, let's bring it back. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I do have one question though. What? What the hell is going on with Montague's neck neck beard? Yeah, I don't know. And why? Why did Haley like pick him? Why was she? Why was he the one that she was interested in? Because age, I think Lawrence is significantly older. What about Cuthbert? Cuthbert? Is he too? She's too ridiculous. Cuthbert's too ridiculous, potentially too flamboyant, and I wouldn't be surprised if he plays for the other side. Yeah. Or he's just, I feel like he's just so oblivious and he will love whomever crosses his path and offers him candy. (laughs) 
Well, you don't want that. That's too easy, you know? Your affections are too fleeting in that, if that's the case. I just think Montague like is he's... the kindred spirit where he is not happy in his place. She's not happy right. in her place. Yes. And not necessarily a romance per se. They do give each other those, like, you know, side-eye looks. Yeah. But... It's more because it feels like you have to have a romance within the gothic novel than... Right. And, you know, they're like, well, let's start things off at the end. Let's go slowly. Let's go for coffee first. Yes. I love the fact that Montague's dream is just to go to the outside world and grab a coffee. (laughs) What is this coffee you speak of? Yeah, what is this? Oh, he's riding that weird bicycle that Wilhelmina made. (laughs) Oh, Wilhelmina. (laughs) So, who's your favourite character? Wilhelmine is one of them, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think it's obvious that yours is Cuthbert. Obvious. It's obviously <laughs> Cuthbert. You've so subtle. <laughs> How can you tell? You what haven't even it? stood on the blasted heath and proclaimed it. Not yet. <laughs> it's not raining, so I can't go out there right now. In your, in your, with your umbrella or your hood? Yes. I have to go and proclaim my love for him, but not spout, just yet. Spout some terrible poetry. Yes. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it one day. <laughs> <sighs> what else? What else? What else? I don't know. It's one of these way it's 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 a it's a difficult book to talk about, I feel It like. is because you really need to enjoy all of the panels. Yeah. What do you think of the whole concept of the gasket universe then? I liked the ga- the gasket universe. I did. I liked that our universe is described as, you know, having Carolina style barbecue. <laughs> and koalas. No, pandas. 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 Pandas and barbecue. That's... What's the best kind of barbecue though? I mean, is Carolina style barbecue the best kind of barbecue? Is that the, the benchmark? I don't know. I mean, it it is a very nice kind, but you know, there's there's many other types of barbecue. So you'll just have to come over and try them all. Yeah, my style of barbecue is burnt sausages, with the chance of uh, food poisoning. That 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 is barbecue. Okay. <laughs> what? Burnt I sausages. Yeah. And yeah. food poisoning. Yeah. The amount of times we I've been to a barbecue where the it's the sausages have been cooked in the black, like charcoal Ooh, yeah. black on the outside. Yeah, where, where that's where the flavor is. But if you go on the if you cut it open, it's like it that needs a bit longer. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, I see. So it's burnt on the outside and frozen on the inside. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. Mm. We had we we did have a barbecue. We had a couple of barbecues last year. And I finally tried a s'more. I was so proud of you for finally eating a s'more. Yes. I had big, giant American marshmallows. Um, digestive, On your digestive biscuits? Digestive biscuits, which I've been reliably informed by an American who was living in Britain at the time that it's the closest thing to a, a Graham cracker. Graham cracker. Graham. Graham cracker. Graham cracker. Graham. And if I wanted to make life easy for myself, use a chocolate digestive rather than putting the chocolate on separately. So that's what I did. I mean, yeah, I guess you could do that. <laughs> that's what I did. And, and it made it squishy and it was melty and it was delicious. Um, apparently there are four main types of barbecue, oh, by the way. Okay. Uh, there's Kansas City style barbecue. And this website that I have found, uh, webstrontstore.com, describes Kansas-style barbecue um, as a smorgasbord of slow-smoked meats rubbed down in a sweet seasoning and slathered in a thick, sugary sauce. Mmm. I don't Um, like sticky barbecue sauce. I don't like... I like dry, dry rub. Mm. Okay. Well, next is Memphis-style barbecue. There are two um, Memphis styles. There's wet and dry. Okay. Okay. Um, 
Ooh, there's also Memphis style barbecue spaghetti, which does um, not sound great. Spaghetti no. noodles tossed in a half marinara, half barbecue sauce loaded with pulled pork, simmered peppers, and onions. I don't know how I feel about that. I I feel um not favorable towards that. No. And then they discuss the wet versus dry ribs. And let's see what's next. Carolina style barbecue. It is um, slow roasted whole hog barbecue and is one of America's oldest methods of cooking meat. Hmm. Okay. And um, it has mop sauce, which is a thin liquid sauce that, uh, that is mopped or brushed onto meat while it cooks. And the mop sauces um, are made with vinegar, apple cider, tomato juice, or beer. Those are the bases. Okay. Okay. And then finally, Texas-style barbecue. <laughs> Why are we reading this aloud on the podcast? This is terrible. <laughs> we're Every... educational. We're not yes. even at an hour. We're fine. No, it's fine. Um yeah, so Texas favors brisket and hot links and ribs. That's the holy trinity of Texas-style barbecue. Is hot links sausages? Yes, right. but they're spicy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I'm not the biggest fan of barbecue sauce. I think it's like, I don't know, it tastes weird. I like no. barbecue sauce. I like a sweet, like a sweet smoky barbecue sauce. I'm, I'm not, not a fan f- of the vinegary ones. Yeah, there's just such a varying degree. I hate it when I get a pizza and I want just a chicken pizza, but they put chicken and barbecue, and I'm like, no, mm. take the barbecue sauce off and shove it up your ass. I, I do not like it. Um, <laughs> there will be barbecue sauces out there that I do like. Um, I think I had a Jack Daniels barbecue sauce that was quite nice once but I mm-hmm. don't like barbecue like if I go for ribs which is very rare I like it dry I don't like to be covered in sticky sauce yeah that's, that's I not an enjoyable don't experience I don't eat ribs you know on you account are a of the carnivore yes unenthusiastic mm. carnivore get it right yeah so I'm not a I'm not a rib person I don't like them. Yeah. I remember having a rack of ribs before seeing Phantom of the Opera in London. That was the best ribs I've ever had. Wow. How do we start talking about barbecue? Oh, our universe. That is what our universe is made of. Yes, Carolina style barbecue. So why why have the pick Carolina style barbecue is like, you know, maybe maybe it's their favorite. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, yikes. Do you have any surprises that we talked about barbecue for 10 minutes just then? I am very surprised. surprise. I did not expect to talk about barbecue for 10 minutes. Um, I'm surprised there wasn't a tragic death as befitting a gothic novel. Oh. Yeah. There's usually somebody who dies either spurring on what happens or during the, the loud thunderstorms at the end. Well, you died. know, Haley, Haley like turned all of those tropes, so True. she saved the monk at the end. I mean, that would have been a death. It would have been a rather violent death, I think, him falling off that turret. But True. she's turned all the tropes on their heads, so she had to save him. That is true. And that is the whole story, isn't it, to break out the box, too? Right, yeah, to get rid of all those stereotypes. Yeah. Which is hilarious and... <laughs> really ties into our would you rather first would you rather question but I have to share my surprise before we move on to would you rather and my surprise is that we talked about barbecue for 10 minutes <laughs> my surprise is that no one was shocked at all uh, that the ghost that Cecily like turned into a moth monster <laughs> She was just telling her story of our universe, and she's like, yeah, this is what we actually look like, and then I got strapped to this machine, I was testing it out, and well, here I am, and now I'm a ghost in a manner. <laughs> but then, you know, she bends reality, and she's a giant purple moth monster, and everyone's just like, okay, 
<laughs> I mean, to be fair, when you live in a gasket universe and, you know, reality is malleable enough as it is, and you've just been attacked by a bile infested a bile a, a bile monster mm-hmm. that takes the Who's form turning... of a mad monk who takes yeah. all the cute bunnies and turns them into bunny va- bunny zombies. Yes, and <laughs> coats everything in glowing, itself. Yes, it's turning everything into itself. And really, is the purple moth monster all that surprising? No, I guess not. The biggest should surprise really should be that you don't have to fit into these clearly defined rules that you can be who you want to be and do what you want to do as long as, you know, you know consent. And consent. Con- consent and don't be a garbage person. Yes. But yeah, just because you're the maiden doesn't mean you can't kick ass. Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't also be the hero. And just because you're a hero doesn't mean you can't have witty comebacks and butter tea kicks. Yes, and a duck on a rapier. <laughs> a duck on a rapier. Even though Cuthbert wasn't the hero, Cuthbert was my hero. Cuthbert was the hero of our hearts. Yes. <laughs> Cuthbert is the hero no one deserves. <laughs> God, I love him so much. <sighs> oh. All right. Should we get back into into our stereotypes? Yes. And play Would You Rather? Would You Rather? It's time, it's time. We asked on social media, which gothic stereotype would you rather be? The maiden, the brooding hero, the mad monk, the foreboding housekeeper, the resident ghost, or the hermit? <laughs> on Facebook, the maiden and the housekeeper won with 25% each. On Instagram, it was the housekeeper with 22%. On Twitter, it was The Hermit with 38%. And on TikTok, it was The Ghost with 30%. So nobody wants to be the maiden, and nobody wants to be the hero, and nobody wants to be the monk, really. I love it. I love... It's not what I was expecting. What were you expecting? I mean, I was expecting everyone to want to be the hero. Maybe they don't want to be a brooding hero. Maybe it's the brooding part that they, they aren't interested in. You're right. Because, I mean, we're not doing vampires this month. Damn it. (laughs) Much to our uncomfortable, doesn't feel right. Yeah, no. No. It's not a vampire book. I don't understand. I think if it was a brooding vampire hero, probably more. Yes. I mean, that's obviously the correct answer. (laughs) Let's see what people say in the comments. So yes. Colin on Facebook says, oh, I, I've got to be the brooding hero. Oh, hey. Thanks, Colin. Go. I love a good brood, I do. Nothing like sitting by an open window, looking out into the moon-drenched night, having a good brood. That's very nice. <laughs> Constance on Facebook says, excuse you, I've been preparing my whole life for the hermit role. I was born for this. <laughs> Nina on Facebook says, the foreboding housekeeper, specifically the overly dark drama queen sociopath. They know everyone's business, all family secrets, every hidden passage, and holds all the power. Now I like that kind of housekeeper. That sounds like a that sounds like a good housekeeper to be. Annie on Facebook says, I'm gonna go with Mad Monk. Imagine the shenanigans I could get up to. Plus it goes well with my anti goals of leading the nibblings astray. <laughs> She's doing such a good job. She really is. She really, really is. Caitlin on Facebook said, I am a hermit by nature and I've always <laughs> dreamed of yelling at kids to get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Bree on Facebook is totally the resident ghost. I relish wearing the same no maintenance outfit every day and eavesdropping on everything while no one questions it. Oh, I think I am a ghost. I'm just corporeal. <laughs> Are you a purple moth monster? I mean, my leggings were purple today. Does that count? It does. There we go. It does. Yeah, it does. Okay. Books Are Forever on Instagram said, I'd say the maiden because that's the one stereotype where you can shock people. 
Also, you will most likely get to be with the brooding hero without having to be the brooding one. Mm, I Good like answer. it. I like the reasoning. Books mm. are forever. I like that. L20 Cav on Instagram said, I'd be the brooding hero, but I can imagine it being really tiring being a hero. So I'd stipulate that I'd just work part time. So only pre-bookings for being saved plus travel expenses need reimbursing. I'd also do a drop-in session one afternoon a week as well for any heroic duties that can't be pre-booked. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I also shared this one at the library, which I do with all of them, as I say every time. But uh, we've got, got some comments this time. And... They are, let's see, ghost for sure. So much fun there. Um, foreboding housekeeper. I think they seriously have all the power. The hermit, just leave me to my bone scrying and talismans and keep me far away from that ghost drama. <laughs> uh, the ghost, potential for mischief. Or the hermit, because people suck. Uh, they're not wrong. <laughs> no. Um, and then we we end with ghostly hermit. Leave me alone in my scary castle with my books. That person, MVP. Yes, <laughs> I love it. This one's really hard. I could easily discount the maiden, the hero, and the mad monk. Easy. Yeah. Not bothered. But there's a lot, like a lot of the comments have raised some very good points. You know, the hermit. Oh, I mean, do you really want to be around people? No. Just stay in your hermitage. You read a book. Watch some TV. Yeah. You know, if you want to interact on social media, and then then you'll reaffirm why you've become a hermit in the first place. Yeah, exactly. But then being a ghost, and then you know, I mean, Bree, not having to wear you know wear a no man's outfit every day. Yeah. yeah. That, that's that that's right up my street. Yeah, I like that. It makes yeah. me think of the ghost from being human. Yes. You yes. just you just wear what you die in. So Which you're is stuck so in that outfit all the time. So My you better outfit. hope it's something cute and comfortable. Well, it's comfortable. It's not cute. It, then it doesn't match. I've changed much. I'm no longer in the purple leggings I was earlier. No. <laughs> uh. You're no longer the purple moth monster. I'm no longer the purple moth monster. I'm a fleecy moth monster now. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm surprised that you're so comfortable being a moth monster, what with your fear, your extreme fear of moths. I hate moths. I'm really proud of you right now for being able to have this conversation with your moth Um, fear. I mean, I'm freaking out on the inside. Let's not get, let's not dismiss that. I hate moths. Oh, God, no. I know you do. I know you do. I'm sorry I said it. It's fine. I'm just imagining that if you're the big giant purple alien moth monster, then it is slightly different than being one of those tiny little moths that likes to stick to your face while you're busy brushing your teeth and then, you know, lives there. The amount yeah, of times stop. I almost text you during moth season is like, Amanda, there's a moth in my bedroom and I can't get to <laughs> sleep and you're like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you fly over from Arkansas and call and kill this moth for me, please. I'll do it. I'll do it. Tomorrow night. I'll kill all the moths for you. I'll be your hero. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, the I'll send you a text message. I just killed a moth in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I went for a weed and was watching me like a pervert. Insects are perverts. <laughs> all insects are perverts. They sit in the bathroom and they watch you have a wee or take a shower. And then they start buzzing around afterwards. And it's, bzz, we know what you were doing. Bzz, we watched you while you were having a wee wee. Bzz, like, get away. <laughs> just don't Okay, I'm back in the room. Or the housekeeper who knows everything. I'm going to go with ghost. Yeah, I can't, like, housekeeper would be great. But also you have to keep the house up. There's a lot of effort involved in it. There is. Yeah, I don't want to do that. A lot of brain power in the background as well. Yeah. You've got to be conniving and and it's too much effort. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Um... You know, if we're talking about the characters from this book specifically, I think I want to be the monk. <laughs> I mean, he's the bad guy, so of yeah. course I'm going to pick the bad guy. But then, you know, I could I can make Cuthbert my thrall. <laughs> and just I'm with Cuthbert all the time. 
Just give him some candy. It's fine. I'm doing it's everything for Cuthbert. I'm doing everything for Cuthbert. <laughs> it's all for him. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, if we're using these characters, probably the hermit. Because I can just live in the hermitage and be all nice and quiet. Yeah, and you've you've got your girlfriend. Well, you don't. She doesn't. Well, but, but they but they role. reunite at the end. That's true. That's true. So if, if we're going to go Willow Weep, I'm going to do Hermit. But if we're going to go in general, I'm going to pick the resident ghost. Mm, okay. Okay. Which, considering what I just said about insects in the bathroom, makes me really come off in a bad light. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to sneak around and snoop on people without them knowing. But not in the bathroom. Like a pervert moth, like you were just talking about. I will respect about. people's privacy in the bathroom. Public spaces. Communal room. Yes. Communal rooms, fair game. Okay, so you're not going to be a pervert moth. I'm not going to be a pervert moth. <laughs> I'll be a respectful <laughs> pervertian moth monster. <laughs> Former ghost, actual ghost. Done. <laughs> Done. Can we move on? <laughs> yes, please. Would you rather... Tackle a bear or punch a deer. <laughs> now, I think these are good if you think about it. A bear is going to win a fight. And if you punch a deer, all you're doing is pissing it off. Yeah. Yeah. But what if you're Wilhelmina in your, in your helmet? Tackle the bear because then I can make a grand entrance. Oh, yes. Yes. So Flying down from the mezzanine. Yeah. With Flight of Valkyrie going on in the background as of well. Of course. If you didn't have that playing, I mean, you wouldn't. What's the point? Yeah. There is no point. I want to punch a deer just because of the look on the deer's face when he gets punched. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just punching a deer. Like, I feel like I could probably get away from a deer after I punch him in the face. Those but things I don't... are fast. I know, but if he's punched in the face, then he's going to be startled for a little bit. I can and... only imagine they've got very thick skulls, though. <laughs> yeah, they probably do. But I just don't think tackling a bear would do any good at all. No, neither's going to be good, but will Wilhelmina remember, so it doesn't really matter. That's true. Well, I mean, it can do anything. Exactly. <laughs> Next question. Would you rather explore the blasted heath or blood wolf forest? Oh, I'm going to the forest. Definitely. I love a, you know, a creepy forest. You got to go to the forest. There might be effigies in there that we can go and find. Yeah. Oh, that shouldn't be there. That's not yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can't quite drinker. decide if. Yeah, we can't quite decide if there's a vampire with us or... It's our imagination. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. All these bodies. So good. <laughs> All right. We'll get vampires in this conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we will. Well, there was the vampire seductresses. True. In the list of villains. So. And it wasn't real. It was an illusion. So. Right. Right. Okay. Would you rather fight monsters with an umbrella or a rapier? I'm going to go with an umbrella and I'm going to fight like Colin Firth in Kingsman. Oh, yes. I'm going to teach those monsters some manners. Yes, because manners maketh man. Yeah. Okay, so which umbrella would you rather have? Oh, no. That one, the the Kingsman umbrella, or Haley's malleable reality umbrella. See, the only reason it's malleable reality umbrella is where there were underneath the gasket universe in the inner workings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with the Kingsman umbrella because then I'm not reliant on being in this one very specific area of outside the universe yeah that's a really cool umbrella too that he has you could have the mary poppins umbrella and you could fly mm. but i don't trust the, the the bird head no no i'm i'm also gonna have a kingsman umbrella 
Um, but I have a question going back to the would you rather, the umbrella or the rapier. Does my rapier have a duck on it? If you want a duck on that rapier, I'd give you a duck on that rapier. But bear in mind you are fighting monsters. So every time you hit a monster with the <laughs> duck quack. rapier, it goes wank, 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 wank. <laughs> Well, I'm definitely doing that then. There we go. All right. <laughs> Perfect. Last question. Would you rather live in Willoweep Manor or the Hermitage? Willoweep Manor has a library. The Hermitage yeah. has peace and quiet. Yeah. Um. I bet you could find some peace and quiet in the manor. Also, there's all the secret passages with the eyeballs and the paintings that you can look out of. Oh... I'm going to go in the manor. I'm going to live in the manor. You've sold it I'm, to me. I, yeah. I, I was thinking hermitage because, you know, people. But yeah. Secret passages. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to get away from people, you can just go into the secret passages. And you can, you know, be a pervert moth and look at them through the eye holes of your paintings. See? What's not to it's love? perfect. It's perfect. Oh, my God. Genius. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's that's the end of Would You Rather. Pervert moths. <laughs> that's all. That's the answer to every question. Would you question. rather have Carolina style barbecue, <laughs> Texas style barbecue, Mississippi style barbecue, Memphis Can- Memphis style Memphis style barbecue, or um, did I say a Kansas City style barbecue? I, I think you did. I think you did. Um, Texas, Carolina, Texas, Carolina, Kansas, Kansas, Memphis. Memphis, Kansas. Yeah. Um. Um. I think I'm gonna go Kansas. I'm gonna go Kansas barbecue. Which one's the dry one? Uh, Memphis had a dry rub. I'll do the dry rub then. Okay. Sold okay. It. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Pervert moths ties together. Yes, pervert moths and barbecue sauce. It's <laughs> all we need. Okay, favorite final thought quote. There were so many. Honestly, I was taking pictures of the panels as I was reading it, and I it know, was, me too. I know. I, it was borderline breaking copyright law. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go with why can't you just be into sexy vampires like the other girls? <laughs> But romances are so romantic. The darkness, the crinolines, the handsome sun men. (laughs) You may have noticed this universe runs on what you might call stupid rules. (laughs) And I'm a heroine. I've read a lot of books. I have an umbrella. I love it. There you go. There's my four. What have you got? Excellent. Excellent. Um, I have... <laughs> Blurg! <laughs> Which is something that I say! Blurg! Yes. I love that. I love that panel. And she's just like on the rock in the rain. Blurg! <laughs> um, I also selected No Sharing, Replacement, Politely Die from the pamphlet. <laughs> Politely Die made me laugh so much I I couldn't handle it politely die (laughs) okay um I'm not sure what else I can do pine get the vapors tutor unsettling children (laughs) when she's trying to figure out you know how she's gonna save the day I just don't know I don't know what I can do (laughs) As the maiden. Those are the only options. <laughs> they suck as options. They <laughs> do. Would you rather pine, get the vapors, or tutor on settling children? I'm going to get the vapors because it's funny. Oh, the vapors. Uh, every now I'm going to get again. the southern style vapors, though. Oh, the vapors. I got the vapors. Can I can I can I get hysterical? Can I have his feminine hysteria? You can have hysteria from Excellent. reading books. Excellent. Because we all know that that reading books causes hysteria. I need some feminine hysteria. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah, you do. You do. Okay. Um. Let's see. What else do I have? Oh, that's cenobite, meaning uh, monk or nun, right? 
not Cenobite meeting some kind of hell creature from a horror movie. <laughs> And finally, my last favorite final thought quote. I never want to read another friggin' gothic romance again. <laughs> Pointed look. Uh, excuse me, if they're funny like that and have Cuthbert's in and ducks on a rapier, <laughs> you'll bloody well read it and you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Cuthbert's in. In a duck on a rapier. Yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. I thank you. I thank you very much. All right. If you liked this, try this. What okay. are you going to suggest? <laughs> I'm just going to tell everybody you need to go and listen and or watch our bloodlets and bloodlets. Sorry. Bloodlets. Bloodlets. Our bloodlust and bonnets by Emily McGowan episode, which is episode one four five. You can listen to it, or you can go onto our YouTube channel and you can watch it. It was the first graphic novel that we covered and we posted the video because we laughed the entire time all yes, the way through. Yes, we did. Oh my gosh, it was and so it's funny. it's such a good book and it was such a fun episode that it is there. So go and check yes. that one out as a, as a recommendation for this podcast and as another yes. book. Yes. But my actual book recommendation is called... Wait, I believe you said Emily McGowan. It's Emily McGovern. McGovern. Sorry. Very Good important. Lost Abundance by Emily McGovern. Sorry, my apologies. Backtrack on that. My actual recommendation is a book I haven't read, but I have picked it up in the shop and I was tempted to pick it up. Um, It's like a middle grade, again, graphic mm-hmm. novel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's The Accursed Vampire by Madeleine McGrain. And the summary is from blackwells.co.uk. Dragoslavia is a vampire kid. It has its perks, but sometimes being stuck as a kid forever can be a pain in the neck. And that's not even the worst part. A few centuries ago, Drago was cursed by a witch. If they don't complete every task she sets, they will be turned into worms. <laughs> no! When the witch wants a spell book from Baneberry Falls, Drago sets off with their immortal friends. But mysteries await in this sleepy Midwestern town, and Drago must find out if the keepers of the spell book have a hidden agenda, like everyone else they've ever known. <laughs> One thing's for sure, after uh, this accursed mission, Drago's immortal life will never be the same again. Oh. Yes, I think it's a middle grade uh, graphic novel, but it looks yeah. fun. It looks really fun. Yeah, um, it's funny that you picked a middle grade graphic novel because I also picked a middle grade graphic novel. Which I know, I know, <laughs> and it's also funny that you're yelling witch at me because the one I selected is called the OK Witch. <gasps> I was going to pick that one as well. Yeah, I actually almost picked your accursed vampire, which is all of this is witchcraft. So, anyway, <laughs> The OK Witch by Emma Steinkellner. 13-year-old moth. <gasps> moth! <gasps> what? We haven't even got tenuous links this week. They're actual genuine links. They're actual links. What the hell? Okay. I don't know. It's it's bonkers. Okay. 13-year-old Moth Hush loves all things witchy. But she's about to discover that witches aren't just the stuff of movies, books, and spooky stories. When some 8th grade bullies try to ruin her Halloween, something really strange happens. It turns out that Founders Bluff, Massachusetts, has a centuries-old history of witch drama. And surprise, Moth's family is at the center of it all. When Moth's new powers show up, things get totally out of control. She meets a talking cat, falls into an enchanted diary, and unlocks a hidden witch world. Secrets surface from generations past as Moth unravels the complicated legacy at the heart of her town, her family, and herself. Ooh. Yeah. I um I was gonna check this one out from my library, but it was checked out already. How rude! How dare the public use a public library? I know. Oh, oh. I think we might have to cover that one since we both and the accursed vampire since we were yeah. 
Google your people. We were both into them. Yeah. 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 I also, I also picked that one, you know, for tenuous link falling into an enchanted diary, you know, because, because Haley kind of falls into a gothic novel. Fall into different places. It's a change of universe. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. Not even tenuous. It is. Mm. It's like a wallop. Yeah. It's like you've been bashed with an umbrella. On the rear, rear, rear. Oh, rear, yeah. see, I went with the umbrella. Ah. <laughs> do we have any indie spotlights? Yes, yes, we do. It's almost like people listen to our podcast and submit things to us because Ooh. the past couple of weeks I've been like, I don't really have, I haven't really gotten any new ones lately. But now I have. I've gotten several. So, um. Ooh. Today, I'm going to share Jackson James, A Journey Through Time by Samuel Delgado. And I picked this one because it has a tenuous link. Jackson James is a high school senior, class of 2004, trying to live up to his science scholarship at Booker T. Washington in Tulsa, Oklahoma, one of the most prestigious schools in the nation. Growing up in a single-parent household with limited means, he has struggled to find his place amongst the private school elites. However, he is determined to make his name known. With aspirations to start his own hip-hop label with his best friend, Dylan Crutcher, as his first recording artist, he is ready to embrace his last year of high school and all the privileges that come with being top dog. All of that changed one night when the unexpected happened. (laughs) Little did he know, that would be the beginning of a journey that would take him through time. (gasps) Journey with him as he discovers how his family and friends cope with his disappearance. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so that's my tenuous link. You know, he's traveling again to a different universe, different time, doing some wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff's coming to play. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's it. For this episode of Fictional Hangover, I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Win, Lose, Kill, Die by and with Cynthia Murphy. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite Fictional Hangover themed merchandise and become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictionalhangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com, follow us on Instagram at fictionalhangover, find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictionalhangover, and on Twitter at fictionalhangover, no E-R. If you'd like this episode, check out our others, a rate, review, and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon 